Hello friends, let's discuss today's set of questions. We'll start with uh, a great uh, technology businessman, Gordon Moore. He passed away recently and he was a co-founder of Intel Corporation. Intel Corporation was started by two of the three persons you have here. We have here Andy Grove. This is Andy, okay? He was, you could say, the first employee and many people call him a co-founder of Intel. This is, um, you know, uh, Robert Moore. Robert Moore. Sorry, Robert Noyes. I'm so sorry. I think I just added them. Um, and this is Gordon Moore. Gordon Moore. So if you mix uh, Robert Moore, you get the names, you know, if you mix the first name and the surname of the two founders, you would get the name of the, you know, a great James Bond film actor. Robert Moore. I know that's a bad one, but then it's easy to remember that way. So Robert Noyce and uh, you know Gordon Moore started Intel Corporation on the 18th of July 1968. 1968. But at the time they started, they called it NM Electronics. NM Electronics. N for Noyce, M, M for you know M for Moore. But then they wanted a different name. Then they decided on a company called the name called Intel. Why did they call it Intel? It is integrated at least electronic. Integrated electronics is the full name of Intel Corporation. So Intel is integrated electronics. Okay, let's take it further from here. <clears throat> now this is a company that's headquartered. This is one of the three largest uh, semiconductors maker now semiconductors are chips okay chips that go into this computer your mobile phone and all that stuff all kinds of gadgets you know cars today have chips you you look at anything that is more or less electronic uh, it would have a chip okay um you know where is it headquartered intel is headquartered in uh, a place called uh, santa clara now santa clara is a small town in the state of california in the u.s in the united states Okay, so this company's current headquarters, no, um, current uh, CEO is um, uh, Pat Gelsinger. Pat Gelsinger. Okay, some places you may find um, single L, no problem. Okay, Pat or, or Patrick uh, Gelsinger. So he's a current CEO. Now, none of them is around. In fact, it's the associate of the company. Uh, but then, you know, there is this guy called Moore, you know, who came up with this Moore's law. Okay, so Gordon Moore came up with Moore's law. Founder of Moore's law. What does it say? It says that the number of semiconductors, number of transistors, transistors on a semiconductor that is on a chip would double every eight, you know, 24 months. Earlier, first he said about 18 months, then they he changed it to 24 months. So the number of transistors on a chip would double every 24 months. In fact, it's now going beyond this actually. It's, you know, the, the development is much faster today. But then this is a little about Intel. Okay, to recapture, started in 1968 by Robert Noyce and uh, Gordon Moore. Uh, initially, they named it after themselves, their first names, so, sorry, their surnames, NM Electronics, standing for Noyce and Moore Electronics. But then they changed the name to Intel, which stands for Integrated Electronics. Coming more beyond this, the current uh, head, head office is in the same place area where it was founded, Santa Clara, in the state of, um, you know, American state of California. The current CEO is Pat Gelsinger. Okay, guys. And Moore's law we mentioned is about uh, the, you know, it describes the number of transits. It says that states that the number of transistors on a chip would double every 18 months initially now it's 24 months he later made it to 24 months okay so robert noise gordon moore co-founders of intel corporation cisco cisco is one of the world's largest uh, you know computer hardware companies in fact if you look at networking telecommunications networking and computer hardware it's one of the world's largest companies. It is uh, the, you know, the owner of Webex. It's a telecommunications tool, as you would know. 
Uh, it also owns uh, stuff uh, that, you know, it also makes the routers, modems and other equipment. In fact, you could say that it's the world's largest internet gear, gear. How do you pronounce it? Gear. The E is pronounced. Gear company. Okay. Internet gear is routers, modems and all that stuff. Now, C Cisco is, sorry guys, Cisco was started um, in um, a place called uh, uh, San Francisco. What is it? San Francisco. See the name? Cisco. It was started in San Francisco. Read it like this. San Francisco. The last five letters of the name of the city of San Francisco gave the name Cisco. Okay. Now, it was started by two persons. We don't, I don't think we need to take all these names. But anyway, since I mentioned this, you could write Leonard Bosak. If you have not heard of the name, no problem. Uh, while in bank exams and related exams, you may not get any questions. But if you end up sitting for an MBA exam, you would get questions like this. Okay. Um, Leonard Bosak and Sandy Lerner. Sandy Lerner. Sorry. Sandy Lemmer. I'm so sorry. Sandy Lemmer. L-E-M-E-R. Okay. These two guys started, uh, you know, um, Sandy and Leonard. Um, started uh, Cisco and um, you need to know, understand that it's a 51 billion dollar company not a very big company by the standards of Apple but it's a pretty big company and the current CEO of this company is Chuck Robbins Chuck Robbins is also the chairperson so Chuck Robbins is the CEO and chairperson of Cisco Systems which is headquartered in San Jose it's pronounced with an H, San Jose, California. Okay, San Jose, California. Let's go past this. Apple. Apple is the world's largest technology company, world's largest technology company. Okay, this company was started by three persons, two Steves, Steve Jobs, and Steve Wojniak and another guy called Ronald Wayne Ronald Wayne the company is headquartered in the Californian town of Cupertino okay yep Cupertino and then we have uh, the current CEO Tim Cook how big is Apple? To give you an idea, last year its turnover was $394 billion. This is 51. Okay, this is, I think, uh, Intel, you know, was about 65 something. Okay. But think about it, my friends. Huge company, isn't it? Very, very big company. $394 billion is about 11 times bigger than what 11 times about 15 times bigger than TCS yes okay so IBM IBM international business machines I think we have been focusing a lot on the founders skip it IBM is um, you know run from a place called um, Armonk the town of Armonk in the American state of New York and its CEO is an Indian a person of Indian origin Arvind Krishna Arvind Krishna ah, Arvind Krishna yes so this 60 billion dollar company at IBM and then Google Google's uh, Google was founded by two persons uh, this in this case I'll give you the names of the founders also um, Lawrence Page or Larry Page, Larry Page or Lawrence Page and uh, Sergey Brin, Sergey Brin, Larry Page and Sergey Brin. Okay, these two guys started Google, but then they established a holding company called Alphabet. So Google is a is owned by Alphabet. 
okay and both google and alphabet have the same ceo sundar pichai sundar pichai sundar rajan pichai and both these are head, both alphabet and google are headquartered in mountain view california okay that's about it uh, we spent a considerable amount of time on this okay i think um, from here we could go further than this Two of the following Indian badminton players defeated China's Tan Qiang and Ren Xiang Yu to clinch the 2023 Swiss Open men's doubles title. Okay. Well, uh, Chirag Shetty and uh, Satvik Sairaj Rankiriti, this um, Indian duo won the men's doubles title. But what about the, I will not focus on the women's doubles titles winner, the Chinese, so let's not get there. Let's look at the you know men's singles winner but where was this held this was held in the swiss town of basel basel is was the host for the swiss open badminton championship and uh, the men's winner was this guy called um, koki watanabe koki a japanese chap called koki watanabe japan okay and the women's singles winner was Pon Pavi Cho Cho Wang. Thailand. Pon Pavi Cho Cho Wang. So we are just discussing the names of the winners, please. Only winners. Okay, singles at the Swiss Open. I guess that's about it. We don't really have to go further than this. In which European country did the Russian President Vladimir Putin recently announce his decision to, you know, to store tactical nuclear weapons, which are smaller in size and all. He stood in Belarus. Belarus is a die-hard, you know, uh, ally of Russia. That's because he, the Belarusian President is a guy called Look, Alexander Lukashenko. Why don't we just write this? Then I'll tell you the story. You know, why he supports Russia. Um, Belarus, you write this. You can see the capital, Minsk, M-I-N-S-K. And the president is Alexander Lukashenko. Alexander. There is another spelling. Instead of X, they write KS, okay, Alexander Lukashenko, Lukashenko, fair, this guy is a president now, he has been the president since the company, the country was more or less established in 94, the office of the country, was, you know, the president's office came into existence in 1994 and since then he has been the president, he runs this country with an iron fist, my friends, yeah, so, the currency is, of course, is you would guess, ruble. Why I would say you would guess? Because it's a Belarusian ruble. And many people regard this as an extension of Russia. Why? See, Russian President Vladimir Putin is seen as a dictator who would twist um, all kinds of elections to suit his purpose, that is to stay in power. Now, I am not taking sides here. Um, you know, the Russian, the Belarusian President is Alexander Lukashenko. Recently, he lost election, but he hung on to, you know, uh, the presidential chair and he said, I don't recognize the result of this um, election because it threw up a surprise. It didn't elect me. People didn't elect me. It elected my, 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 my rival. So he said election cancelled, result annulled. So in this, he has not been supported by the rest of the world, especially Europe, you know, Western Europe, countries like Poland and all. Russia has supported him. So he supports Russia. Okay, that's how it works. This is Poland and it's a pretty big country as you can see here. Mm. Sorry guys. Poland's capital as you can see, the capital is mentioned Warsaw. It's already mentioned here. Okay. And um, the Prime Minister is Matt, I'm so sorry, Matthews.
Moraviki. Okay, Moraviki. There is some, yeah, Moraviki. Ayo, Moraviki. He is the Prime Minister Matthews Moraviki. Now, the currency of Poland, as some of you would recall, as we discussed in the past, Zloty. What is it? Zloty. Romania. This is Romania, my friends. I just wanted to become familiar. Look at this. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. This is also Russia. This is called Kaliningrad. This is a Russian place. Kaliningrad province or what they call Oblast. Which is other name for a province. Okay. So this is Russia. So Russia directly does not share border with Poland. But you know through this province enclave it does. Hmm? So um, you have Belarus pro anti 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 Russia. Okay. So here uh, there is this Moldova which is anti Russia. All these countries are anti Russia, my friends, except Hungary and um, you know Serbia, two countries. Romania's capital is Bucharest. And the president is a guy called Klaus Ioannis. Ioannis. Hmm. The currency is Liu. L E U. Belarus, we know. Latvia. This is Latvia. Latvia's capital, as you can see there, Riga. It's already mentioned R I G A. So I'll give you the name of the president, the prime minister. Chris Janis Karins. Chris Janis Karins. Hmm. The currency is Euro. The currency is Euro. And uh, coming to Estonia, this is Estonia. I'm uh, sorry, Lithuania. We'll not discuss Estonia, we'll discuss Lithuania. Lithuania's capital, as you can see, is uh, Vilnius, V I L N I U S. And the president here is Gitanas Nosida. Gitanas. No seed. That's the president. Euro is a currency. Hmm? Hamza Yusuf has become the youngest first minister of Scotland. I will take this question to. He's a person of Pakistani origin. Okay. I want you to look at this map and understand a few things. Many people often confuse Britain, Great Britain, GB with UK. So are they the same? And what about England then? Hmm? They're all separate. This is England. Okay. This is a part of the island of Britain. This is Britain, my friends. This you can see here. This is Britain. Okay. This island you see, this is Great Britain. The island, the mainland, this is Britain. Okay. This is Britain. So Great Britain is the main island. Island comprising comprising England plus Wales W A L E S Wales plus Scotland. So that is Great Britain. The main island comprising England, Wales, and Scotland. Okay. Now so England is a part of Great Britain, the island of Great Britain. It's just a province, you could call it. So we have Great Britain, England, plus Wales, plus Scotland, plus to Great Britain, we will add Northern Ireland. You see, this is Northern Ireland, plus you see the small islands here, Isle of Man, you know, all these places, you could say islands. What is it? Small you know, islands. Or they are also called British islands. British islands. So all of these together are called United Kingdom. United Kingdom. So Great Britain plus Northern Ireland plus islands are called is to, uh, together called the United Kingdom. Okay. Yeah. So the UK shares a land border with the only one country. You may say, hey, come on, UK is an island country. No, 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 no. You see here Northern Ireland, 
so it does share a land boundary with Ireland. It share, shares a land boundary with Ireland. Okay. So that's a bit about it. For many decades, centuries now, Scotland had fought to get out of the United Kingdom. It wants to be a separate country, an independent country. But in the last referendum, the people of Scotland uh, spoke, um, you know, to, to, to remain with the UK. Hmm, let's see how it works. Yeah. Which country became the latest? Uh, just to give you something. Okay, let's extra stuff. Bulgaria, capital, Sofia. Belgium, Brussels. Capitals only, please. Brussels. This is Dublin. Dublin. Okay. Next. Which country became the latest uh, NATO member to ratify Finland's accession to the military alliance? So where is Finland? This is Finland. Where I put this F. But you don't see this in green. Huh? The, in green are all NATO members. Because um, this is a map from last month. Okay. Till about last month. Not even last month. You could say before 24th March. Why didn't you write this NATO? North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So I'll give, go a bit fast. North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Underline that first point. Military Alliance. Military Alliance of 31 countries. Military Alliance of 31 countries. Next. Started 1949. Next. Head Office Brussels. Brussels. Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg of Norway. Jens Stoltenberg of Norway. Hmm. 31 members. Initially started with um, about 12 members, now it's 30 members. What it has done is it has extended the boundary that NATO has with Russia. Yeah, uh, earlier it was only this Baltic nations and, um, you know, uh, Poland and all. Now it's more than that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big actually. The entire Finland boundary is with Russia on Finland Finnish boundary on its east is with Russia and the entire boundary becomes a NATO boundary with Russia yeah so Turkey said yes because the membership of each nation application of each member has to be approved by all the members Turkey had initially objected because um, it said that both Sweden and Finland have um, given asylum to anti, not Turkish, anti-president Erdogan. Recep Tayyip Erdogan is the president of Turkey. So his political opponents have been given asylum, have been given shelter in Finland and Sweden, where they are carrying out anti-Erdogan activity. So he said, as long as you do that, we will not let you become a member of the NATO. So Finland's accepted, okay, Finland has sent back a couple of people that the president, Turkish president uh, Erdogan wanted, you know, uh, so he, they have sent back a couple of people. Sweden has not done this. So Sweden's application is still pending. Hmm? So if you would want to write a bit about Finland, Finland's um, capital is Helsinki. They have just had a new election. The current president, uh, Prime Minister, Sana Marin has lost. So we will discuss in the next class as to who the new Prime Minister is. Okay, that's the capital. Denmark's capital is Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Denmark is a tiny country, my friends. This is Denmark. You can see here. This is Denmark. That's it. Hmm? Switzerland uh, is not a sea. It's not a northern, say, Ireland. Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, it's called. 
then Switzerland, Austria and some nations here, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, these are all not members of NATO. Otherwise, you see the whole of European Union is member of NATO. So Switzerland is not a member, but the cap there is no capital also, no legal capital. By law, there is no capital. Yes, de facto, there is a capital called Bern. And Sweden's um, capital is Stockholm. Stockholm. Turkey, Ankara. Norway, Oslo. Just the capitals. The ISRO's LVM launch vehicle mark LVM-3 in its second commercial launch has placed 36 one-web satellites in orbit. Identify the correct statements about this. All of these are correct, my friends. I want to discuss only two things here. Uh, what is one is one web, the other is Aditya L1. So one web you could write um, head office London, CEO Neil Masterson, Neil Masterson, and broadband broadband satellite internet company broadband satellite internet company so it provides satellite in different parts of the world via sat it provides broadband internet via the satellite like you have starlink that is the main um, you know source of the internet in ukraine starlink is a company owned by space corporation spacex spacex is owned by elon musk yeah what about um, yahoo is the main shareholder of oneweb do you know that bharti enterprises our Airtel company is the main shareholder, 30% shareholder of when web. What about Aditya L1? Aditya, as you know, is Sun. Okay, you could write this Aditya L1 dash to be launched in July 2023. Most likely, um, July 2023 dash to study to study the sun's coronography. The sun, Surya, coronography. The sun's coronography. So basically, it's a solar observation satellite, sun observation satellite mission. Okay. The 2023 Earth hour was observed on 25th March. It's always observed on 25th March to encourage individuals, communities, and businesses to turn off non-essential electric lights for one hour. It's a worldwide movement organized by WWF, which is headquartered in, uh, what is the place here? In Switzerland, Gland. It's headquartered in Gland, Switzerland. And, uh, not Switzerland. And its CEO is Pawan Sukhdev. Pawan Sukhdev. Okay, let's take one more organization. UNEP, United Nations, no, 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 I think. Um, UNEP, United Nations Environment Program, head office, Nairobi, which is the capital of Nairo, uh, Kenya. And uh, Nairobi is where Inger Anderson sits, the Secretary General. of Denmark. Anderson of Denmark. Hmm. Of which nation's commitment of 2.3 million pound, billion pounds uh, for the provision of military aid and support of to Ukraine is Operation Interflex apart. The United Kingdom has been over zealous over Z E A L O U S. Zeal means that extra vigor basically. Okay. Enthusiasm. Um, see, Western European countries like Germany, Norway, France and Britain have been over eager to help the Ukrainians. Uh, but unfortunately for them, these countries themselves are deep in trouble, my friends. But then that has not stopped them from playing the big brother, from being, you know, seen as large hearted, even though their economies are in a deep, you know, deep hole. And second thing. Military technology, military equipment that they are giving to Ukraine is also leading to depletion of their own stocks for their own security. 
it's a real problem they are facing. Okay. Uh, what about Canada? Canada's capital is Ottawa, and its prime minister is Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. You know about France, Germany, and all. Australia, Canberra, nickname Bush City. Bush means jungle. This city was built in the middle of a jungle, actually. Because both Sweden and Melbourne wanted to be the capital. The fighting wouldn't subside. The bickering, the argument between the people of Sweden and the people of North Melbourne, their representatives there would not subside, would not come down. So the government of Australia did something remarkable. They chose a spot that was more or less equidistant from, you know, from Sydney and Melbourne. And there they built a new capital city called Canberra. Canberra is built in the middle of a jungle that's why it's called Bush City. Bush is jungle. Okay. Um, the Prime Minister is Anthony Albanese. Anthony Albanese. Okay. Which government undertaking successfully developed a bauxite certified reference material named Bark B1201 in collaboration with the Baba Atomic Research Center? Okay, this is Nalco. What is it? Nalco. Nalco, my friends, is um, one of India's big, it's India's biggest public sector aluminium manufacturing company. Its CEO is Sridhar Patra. Sridhar Patra. NMDC, just let's take one more company. NMDC, National Mineral Development Corporation. It is Amitava Mukherjee. Amitava Mukherjee. Okay. I just want to tell you one more thing. I think I I could, yeah, I could install. I, I wanted to discuss only one web and, uh, one web and, uh, uh, you know, Aditya want here, L1. But let me bring in, see today, the commercial arm, all these satellites, especially of foreign companies, satellites and everything are negotiated, you know, um, they, they, they enter a deal with uh, a particular company called New Space, New Space, you know, technologies, New Space Corporation, you could write New Space India Limited, NSIN, New Space India Limited, dash, commercial wing of ISRO, commercial wing of ISRO, commercial wing of ISRO, um, chairperson, dash chairperson, Radha Krishnan Durai Raj, Radha Krishnan Durai Raj, Radha Krishnan Durai Raj. The Chenab Railway Bridge, touted as the world's highest railway bridge, is expected to become operational by 2024. The Chenab River originates from the Lahul Valley in lovely bridge, isn't it? Himachal Pradesh. If you want to write, I'll give you some dope on this. Look at this beautiful bridge. Isn't it nice? It looks like it doesn't look like India. Because we have always been told that we are not great at engineering and all that. Look at this. It's the world's highest rail bridge. You could write this. Um, Chenab Railway Bridge. Chenab Railway Bridge. Dash. 1.3 kilometer long. 1.3 kilometer long. Next. 359 meters. 359 meters. High. World's highest railway bridge. World's highest railway bridge. So it's made from concrete and steel, my friends. It's what is called an arch command. You see this? Hmm? Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. From here, let's look at the river. Chena. You could write this. Chena River. Dash. Called, called Askini, 
in Rugveda. In Rugveda. Askini in Rugveda. Dash. Formed by. Formed by. Chandra and Bhaga rivers. Chandra and Bhaga rivers. So when these two merge, you have Chena. Okay. How long is the river? Dash. 1200 kilometers. 1200 kilometers. Next. In which of the following states did the central government recently decide to reduce the disturbed areas, uh, the number of disturbed areas under the special, Armed Forces Special Powers Act 1958? Three states, all three are mentioned here Nagaland, Assam, Manipur. These are the states in Northeast India. Arunachal Pradesh, largest state there. India's least densely populated state. India's least densely populated state Sikkim India's what to say least populated state least populated state so this is least density okay let's take it further you know this place here this is called the Siliguri corridor chicken snake Siliguri Corridor Siliguri Corridor also known as Chicken's Neck Chicken's Neck Dash Narrowest Narrowest stretch of land At its narrowest point, my friends, it is just 34 kilometers. Narrow stretch of land connecting Northeast India, Northeast India with other parts of India. Okay, from here, let's go a little past this. You will find. Um, this is Nagaland, okay, the predominantly Christian Baptist Church um, state. The Baptist Church is the main church here and it is India's most populated Baptist state. In fact, uh, most of the Christians here in Nagaland practice, you know, um, they, they, they follow the Baptist Church. Okay, this is Tripura, India's I think is third smallest state after a Sikkim. Uh, after Goa, Sikkim and this one, okay. Anyway, let's go past this and let's look at the capitals. Tripura, Agartala. Uh, beautiful city of Agartala. Mizoram. Mizoram's capital is Aizol. Manipur, Imphal. Assam, Dispur. Nagaland, Kohima. See, under the AFSPA, military persons have immunity from certain actions. This has also led to a lot of angst, heartburn among the locals here because often they have accused the military of high-handedness, of indulging criminal behavior. Um, there have been instances where women have been raped by security forces. It's a sad thing by some rogue security force, you know, um, person who's, you know, who's indulged in such behavior. It brings a bad name to the whole of the, you know, uh, the great Indian army. But, you know, this is also led, as I said, a lot of agitation and a lot of heartburn among the people here. This is one of the main grievances. And the current government at the center has said that we are looking into it. We are looking at reducing the number of places which could be where AFSPA will be in 
work in practice okay so under this people could be detained arbitrarily could be you know there are a lot of arbitrary there is a lot of arbitrariness in this act actually recently the union minister for environment forest and climate change uh, launched the aravalli green wall project uh, identify the correct statements regarding this project so i'm not going to focus on this it's already self explanatory but uh, even the minister's name is not important to me right now i just want to tell you about the aravalli mountain range aravalli range 670 kilometers southwest direction it starts in rajasthan on the gujarat border from there it goes like this towards delhi okay so it has also played a major role in controlling the spread of the thar desert and uh, the total length is see, about 670 kilometers moves in a southwest direction from the south we are looking at it and then we also have to look at it this way that it is highest peak is guru shikar guru shikar near mount abu near mount abu guru shikar 1722 meters 1722 meters guru shikar okay and um, how old people say that the aravalli is a pretty old how old are these some geologists put it at the age of 37 crore years yeah yeah you could be 30 years old 20 years old 22 years old now how old are the aravalli mountains 37 crore years old that's a lot of years yeah India's first cloned desi ghee female calf Ganga was produced at the National Dairy Research Institute Karnal which is in Haryana okay now you know what Karnal is famous for two things one is the great kalpana chawla um, astronaut who unfortunately you know um, died in the space disaster shuttle disaster and then um, apart from this we could also look at um, another thing nadir shah invaded delhi at this time and um, this was in 1739 i think there was a guy called ahmed shah who was the ruler of delhi at this time and um, uh, mohammad shah sorry mohammad shah and uh, he was very weak though he tried through his prime minister called kim kilich khan he tried to put up a brave front uh, Nadir Shah destroyed Delhi, my friends. It is believed that after a local group of, you know, I mean, group of local Delhites, uh, they attacked some soldiers uh, belonging to his to, to Nadir Shah's army. He swore revenge, and it is believed that in the next 24 hours, he killed one lakh people of Delhi, women, children, everyone was killed. One more than one lakh people died in that. Um. you know the world's so this is cloned daisy one of the first cloned animals was a sheep called dolly this is a cloned you know sheep this was produced in britain edinburgh edinburgh we saw it's the capital of uh, what is that um, uh, scotland a while ago we took the name of hamza yusuf you know um he would rule from he would be the minister in charge of scotland uh, um you know and he would sit in edinburgh and that is where um, you know the roslin institute is located where dolly the sheep was created yeah which is the following team with sweden based crunch um, fish to participate in the rbs pilot program to facilitate offline payments i'm not going to deeper into this not much of an issue here idfc first bank idfc my friends is industrial development finance corporation industrial development finance corporation was started by uh, sorry its ceo is v vaidyanathan v vaidyanathan v vaidyanathan yes bank prashant kumar prashant kumar yes bank sandeep bakshi 
कोटक महिंद्रा बैंक उदय कोटक इंडस इंड बैंक सुमंत कापालिया सुमंत कापालिया which has become the first country in the world to unveil its own model for estimating the tuberculosis burden choosing to step away from the global estimates drawn up by each year by the world health organization it's india my friends the world has about um, you know um, 10 million cases my friends of tb okay 10 billion cases of tb uh, of which about 20% are in india a little over 20% it is believed about you know um, 20 2.2 crore TB patients are in India, but then, um, you know, uh, not 2 point, not, I'm so sorry, not 2.2, 22 lakh, lakh people in India have TB. So, you know, um, about 20% of the world's TB patients are in India, my friends. And India is uh, looking at uh, eliminating TB by 2025. That's the national goal. Eliminate TB by 2025. Remember 2025. Okay. Indonesia is the world's largest archipelago. Archipelago, which is a group of islands. World's largest group of islands. Over 17,000 islands make Indonesia. Next capital is Jakarta. J A K A R T A. J A K A R T A. And its president is a guy called Joko Widodo. Australia, we discussed a while ago. Anthony Albanese is the prime minister. Anthony Albanese. Okay. Pakistan, Shahbaj Sharif. Bangladesh, Hasina Wajed. Hasina, Sheikh Hasina Wajed. Okay. Alibaba Group Holding is planning to split its business into six main units. Six main units. Whom of the following will continue to serve as chairman and CEO of the Alibaba Group? Daniel Chang. Who started it? Alibaba Group is one of the world's biggest e-commerce companies, my friends. One of the world's biggest technology companies. Jack Ma started. He's a founder, my friends. He's the founder. Okay. Um, he has fallen into the bad eyes of uh, the Chinese government and consequently he was uh, first asked to resign and then asked to resign as the chairperson of Alibaba, put in jail or he just simply disappeared for about four months. Um, then, of course, uh, after, you know, all this happened after he criticized the Chinese financial regulators. Okay. Uh, Alibaba owns companies like Ant. It's a, these are all group companies, huh? T-Mall. Tao Bao, plenty of companies it owns. Okay. Lee Jun. Lee Jun is a founder, CEO of Xiaomi. What is it? Xiaomi. Founder, CEO of Xiaomi. Where is it? Alibaba Group headquartered, Huang Zhao. Huang Zhao. You know, um, these are the subsidiaries of Alibaba. The second G20 group of 20 infrastructure working group meet, um, you know, was held at uh, Vishakhapatnam, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, there we go. Mm, plenty of these activities are happening, G20 and all that. So we have been repeatedly mentioning this in each class, in all our classes. So I'm at least now today, I'll skip it. Okay. But I will tell you something here. Um, Varied things about each of this. Kochi is home to uh, naval, physical, and oceanographic laboratory. Naval, physical, and oceanographic laboratory. Oceanographic laboratory. It's a DRDO lab there. 
Patna, okay, why don't we write Patna? There's not much to distinguish. So let's write the river, the airport here. Lok Nayak, J. Prakash Narayan. Lok, Lok Nayak, J. Prakash Narayan International Airport. J. Prakash Narayan International Airport. Hyderabad, plenty of formations here. You could write National Institute of Nutrition. National Institute of Nutrition. Ahmedabad, hmm, Ahmedabad is Ahmedabad is Physical Research Laboratory, PRL, Physical Research Laboratory, and we could also write one more thing, hmm, Physical Research Laboratory, and uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel International Airport, Sardar Vallabhai Patel International Airport. P.V. Satish, founder of the Deccan Development Society, passed away recently. He was the, known as the Millet Man. He was born in Mysore, but he moved to a place here near Hyderabad called Pastapur. It's written in English as P-S-T-A-P-U-R. When I first read it, when I was driving to some place, I, you know, I was moving through the village and I was, I found it Pastapur. It's not Pasta in Telugu. When I read it, it's Pastapur. Okay. So the great the man had great love for the people of Telangana and he moved here and he all his life he was 77 when he passed away recently in March he passed away I guess yeah and uh, he throughout his life had promoted millets as an alter a better meal better food grain than you know rice and wheat actually yeah and surprisingly what and I'm sure that uh, you know he would have been very glad because uh, the this year he is being celebrated as the International Year of Millets. International Year of Millets. 2023. His lifelong fight to propagate, to popularize millet as a better food has borne fruit. And um, the UN has designated this year to be the International Year of Millets. And this the UN did at the insistence of India. Okay. Um, full name was, I think, Periya Patna Venkata Subbaya Satish. You don't have to worry. Okay. Periya Patna Venkata Subbaya Satish. In which of the following states are union territories? The Union Minister Dr. Chitin Singh inaugurated Asia's largest 4 meter international liquid mirror telescope at Devastal. Uttarakhand, not much to discuss here. Let's go past this. And um, this is one question. There's hardly anything to discuss. Which country launched its uh, national genome strategy to provide a comprehensive legislative and governance framework to support the development and implementation of genomic programs? United Arab Emirates. Yeah. And um, the capital is Abu Dhabi. It has seven kingdoms. Amirat is an Arabic word for a kingdom, local name, and seven Amirats came together. You have Al Kuwain, Ras Al Khaima, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Fuzera, names like this. All these kingdoms came together to form one country called the United Arab Emirates. That's the capital, Abu Dhabi, and the president of this country is Mohammed bin Zayed. Mohammed bin Zayed. Remember Muhammad, Muhammad, son of Zayed, basically. Okay. Um, the currency is Dharam. You could write one more. Qatar, capital Doha. Capital Doha, and uh, the pres the king here is Tamim Al Thani. That's the ruling house's name. Okay, Tamim Al Thani and uh, the currency is, I think, Rial. Yeah, Rial. We want the surname of this guy, Muhammad bin Zayed Al Nayan. N A H Y A N. India's first cable state bridge, railway bridge, the Anji Khad Bridge, is set to be operational by May 2023. It's in JNK. 
it's built across the river anji you could write built across anji anji river tributary of chenab tributary of chenab hmm the length is about 473 meters this you see is from here till here 473 meters and the height of this is 163 meters 163 meters so the indian railways is building all these bridges to come you know to connect distant far flung parts of india with this you know with other parts of india uh i guess that's about it but you know uh, just to bring in a while ago we mentioned devasthal which is in uttarakhand uttarakhand has two capital cities uttarakhand has two capital cities um one is uh, dehradun okay and then gher sen gher sen so these are the two capitals of uttarakhand similarly himachal pradesh has two capitals one is shimla we all know this then the second is Dhar dharamshala dharamshala historically jnk also has had two capitals jammu and srinagar okay ladakh le punjab chandigarh sikkim gangtok which indian this list was appointed honorary officer in the general division of the order of australia for its distinguished service to the australia india bilateral relationship particularly to trade investment and philanthropy philanthropy comes from two separate words phil means love anthropy mankind the love of mankind someone who's large hearted someone who's a donor to you know uh, large causes or any kind of causes ratan tata ratan tata he is a non executive chairperson of tata sons tata sons gautam adani mukesh ambani we all know this uh, kumar mangalam birla aditya birla group aditya birla group aditya birla group which owns companies like ultra tech yeah which owns companies like ultra tech uh, Ultra Tech, its partner of its 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 owner of Idea Cellular, which is a partner in Vodafone Idea. It owns Adit um, Pantaloons. It owns um, what is that company? Uh, it owns um, uh, brands like Allen Solly, Louis Philip, Peter England. Then it owns um, you know um, one of the world's largest carbon Philips companies. It owns Grasim. It owns Hindalco. Plenty of companies it owns. Hmm. Shiv Nadar is um, non executive chairperson of chairperson of HCL non executive chairperson of HCL or what is called chairman emeritus of HCL HCL is Hindustan Computers Limited Hindustan Computers Limited he is called the father of India's co computer industry father of India's computer industry father of India's computer industry Okay. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, Nabar Day Foundation, which Indian city has been included in the World Tree City 2022 list for the second consecutive year, it's Mumbai. Uh, we just need to look at this, not this American NGO, but yes, FOA. This is a specialized agency, Food and Agricultural Organization, Food and Agri Agricultural Organization is a United Nations specialized agency. It's headquartered in Rome, which as you know is the capital of Italy. And Italy or Hindi, in Hindi we call it Italy. And uh, of course it's, um, it is um, headed by a Chinese bureaucrat named Kong, sorry. Q Dong Yu, Q Dong Yu, Q Dong Yu. Calcutta, couple of things, extra stuff. Uh, you could write Botanical Survey of India, 
Botanical Survey of India, Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose International Airport. Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose International Airport. Bengaluru, Indian Institute of Science and Kempe Gowda. Kempe Gowda. Okay. International Airport. Which regulatory body decided to set up a corporate debt market um, for development fund in the form of an alternative investment fund with an initial corpus of 2000 crore? Corporate debt is where companies borrow money from the markets uh, by issuing bonds and everything. Okay. So, and it's a very fragile market as of today because things are pretty bad, interest rates are very high, companies are incurring a lot of cost on their borrowings. So, a lot of companies have stopped borrowing because um, this adds cost and cost adds, cost eats into profits, my friends. Yeah. SEBI, as you know, SEBI is Securities and Exchange Board of India, started in 1988. Um, Securities and Exchange Board of India is the regulator of the stock market, stock and capital markets in India. Stock and capital markets in India. Okay, it's headed by, it's headquartered in Mumbai. Only in this case, I'll give you the head office. Headquarters in Mumbai. And it is run by Madhavi Puri Buj. Madhavi Puri Bhuch. PFRDA, Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority. Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority is a regulator of the pension sector, including National Pension Scheme. National Pension Scheme and um, National Pension System or Scheme. Sorry, PFRDA is headed by Deepak Mohanty. Deepak Mohanty. Reserve Bank of India. We all know about this. NABAD. National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. Head Office Mumbai. Highest Agriculture Refinancing Organization. I am giving points, that's it. Highest Agriculture Refinancing Organization. So it lends money to credit societies, cooperatives and all that. Headed by, as chairperson is K.V. Shaji. K.V. Shaji. With which Indian defense manufacturer did the Indian Ministry of Defense sign a contract for the procurement of 13 links U2 fire control systems for the Indian Navy for about 7000 sorry about 1700 crore under the buy Indian IDMM category now what is this answer is already mentioned and Bharat Electronics does not have a full time chairperson for now so I want you to write what are the differences between these four different four types of purchases the government of India makes when it says buy Indian IDMM what is what is it how is it different from buy indian how is it different from buy indian buy global make in india then buy global you could write this buy indian the first one okay dash idmm stands for iddm stands for indigenously developed Indigenously designed, indigenous means natively designed designed, developed and and manufactured and manufactured with minimum of fifty percent local with minimum of 50% indigenous content local or indigenous is same indigenous content on cost basis on cost basis 
of total contract value of total contract value so i repeat iddm stands for indigenously designed developed and manufactured in india with 50% indigenous content based on total contract value based on sorry uh, um, indigenous content 50% indigenous content on cost basis on cost basis of total contract value so if the contract value is 100 crores 50% of that should be at least 50% should come from within the country okay that is one and everything else should be designed developed and manufactured in India so if the stuff is being imported from outside raw materials and everything at least 50% should be in manufactured in India okay on cost basis now you look at the second one Indian by Indian you write this by Indian dash IDDM or IDDM or 60% IDDM with IDDM with 60% IDDM with 60% indigenously indigenous content of cost value of cost value so here if it's Indian either you you know at least 60% of that should be locally sourced okay next buy global make in India buy global make in India right initial initial purchase could be initial purchase could be made in full from made in full from outside India outside India outside India and later and later and later and later stuff should be later stuff should be made in India made in India this is like Raffaele aircraft initial lots purchased from there okay and the rest of the stuff are being manufactured in India rough you know aircraft next by global by global by global complete purchase from complete purchase from foreign markets But there is also a condition here. At least thirty percent should be sourced from local units after the purchase. Means ancillary spare parts. So foreigners should set up some short shop here, you know, um, and supply stuff that stuff to us. Spare parts, servicing, all this stuff. Okay. That's all from me. Thank you for being here. Have a lot of fun, my friends. Stay curious.